You kicked us off with the European activism. I think that's a great place to start. There was a huge uptick, and I'm wondering where a lot of that activity was coming from, even among such a few set, like it was a small set of investors that were really looking to the region, right? That's right. It's, it's primarily coming from the United States. Over 50% of the campaigns originated in the United States. And frankly, we've been waiting for Europe to become a target for several, several years now. And everyone's been talking about it, talking about it. You know, everything, they're going to be coming over the walls and entering Europe. Last year, it actually happened. Why is it attractive? A couple reasons. One, uh, relative valuations. Look at the U.S. market right now over the past year. Uh, compare that to where Europe valuations have been arguably suppressed. The second thing is that the activists are very familiar with the business models of global companies. So Europe was a natural place to look for targets. And the third reason is the shareholder base. It's increasingly looking like an American or Anglo-Saxon shareholder base in Europe. And the activists know those guys quite well. Yeah, I mean, there are so many private equity firms in particular that are upping what they can, you know, take as a stake in public companies. And that's maybe why they're looking to Europe more, because there's more value there. That's right. And I think private equity is really interesting. Think about it. Activists, sort of public company investors, deployed $62 billion last year. That's a, that's a lot of powder. Where were the private equity firms? What activists identify are, are discounts to intrinsic value. Those would have been natural private equity targets five, ten years ago. I think private equity is going to have to think about the role that activists are playing with companies that they'd like to invest in. The private equity industry has been hurt by activism in many ways, too, right? I mean, activists have bid up the price of deals. What are some examples of this that we've seen? Well, we, uh, you know, we watched GE try to buy a couple 3D printing companies in Europe last year and the year before. Elliott stepped in, bumped up the price. They backed off one deal. They had to raise the price for another deal. So it's a real factor. The other thing, though, is that that $62 billion of capital arguably could have been deployed by private equity. I'm glad you brought up Elliott for a second here, because in your research, Elliott is the clear outlier here on how much they've been, you know, targeting companies. What's make, what, what allows them to stick out in your perspective? So Elliott, yeah, it's, they, they launched 19 campaigns last year. That's three times the, the number of the next, the next most active activist. Um, there's a couple reasons. One, they have a lot of capital. They have a lot of credibility with shareholders in the market. They're very experienced, um, and they've invested in a global structure. They're the only activist which has teams, boots on the ground in Europe and in Asia, and that allows them to pursue more targets. They also have invested in resources. They have people who actually can do fundamental research on business models. Has campaigning got better in the sense that there's a little bit more, you know, to answer on either side, both from the company's perspective and from the shareholders' perspective. We saw this most recently with the Nelson Pels and the Tryon vote that was overturned, and suddenly P&G had lost the vote by 0.01%, but it, that hadn't come to light before there was a so-called recount. Yep, and I, and I can't, you know, I can't comment on, on individual situations, but I think after five years of full-blown activism, um, the players are all taking up their game. Companies um, are much better prepared for activism than they were five years ago. They're thinking like their own activists and trying to identify their vulnerabilities in advance. They're hiring advisors who can study the, the market. They're hiring communication experts, lawyers, bankers. They're just much better prepared. And the shareholders are better prepared, too. Yeah. What are some of the more non-traditional activists we're seeing in the market? We're seeing D. Shaw, for example, Target yep. Lowe's. That's a whole new category. Newberger Berman, Target, yeah. Target. Well, so active managers um, are under increasing pressure given the amount of fund flows that are going into passive strategies. And so active managers are looking for ways to generate alpha. Their traditional strategies, having you know, large mutual funds, you know, increasingly just mimic the performance of indexes. So by pursuing an activist strategy, it provides a new route for alpha. And Newberger Bourbon did it at Whole Foods. Tremendous play. That arguably, again, could have been a private equity idea, but it started with a traditional active manager. So more along the lines of more private equity seeking more active investment. I look at Whole Foods and I look at an op, you know, a return that happened in three months for a traditional active manager, Newberger Berman and Jana Partners, the activist, that was measured in the hundreds of millions of dollars. You would have thought that you know, a smart private equity player would have seen that opportunity and done it itself. Mm. Is it a good thing that the trend is towards allowing an institution or a private equity fund own more of a company? I think BlackRock owns, what, 5% of all of the S&P 500 companies, and now PE firms can, are, are sort of starting funds that can have as much as 10%. Yeah, it's, um, it, it, it's a real challenge. BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street together own 18 to 20% 
of every public company. If you look at the top 10 shareholders of the average S&P 500 company, it's 45.7%. So if private equity is going to play a role in public company equity stories, 10%, you know, that's, that, maybe that's just a starting point. That'll match them with Vanguard. Yeah, exactly. Is that a good thing? I mean, if you're an activist, if you're like a man on the heath, sort of solo activist <laughs> out there, you have to only really convince a couple of the major shareholders, maybe even one. That's right. And I, I, well, whether it's good or bad, it's the reality today for a public company board and CEO. Concentration of ownership is probably the biggest single driver of shareholder activism for exactly the point you made. You only have to make four or five phone calls. I, I often tell people, you know, your top three shareholders are going to be Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street. Who are shareholders four through ten? That's the real fulcrum point. Are the demands for sh from shareholders changing? We saw Jana and Calsters, for example, make this demand of Apple to kind of make their products safer for younger children. Are shareholders asking for things that they typically haven't before, and, and I, well, why? I think two things. M&A has become more prominent as a, as a thesis. One third of the attacks last year were on M&A. But there's also this emerging sort of ESG theme. And these aren't sort of traditional economic issues in the minds of an active manager. But um, I think Apple's a good point. You have an activist teaming up with a pension fund ident identifying technology as a risk to the company, a long-term fundamental risk. Um, so I, I think it, uh, that, that sort of, I think maybe gets into another topic, which is, you know, what's the role of sort of technology in terms of presenting risks for companies? We're out of time, but I do want to ask you, you know, you, you talk about these attacks. I mean, it, technically, all of these campaigns should be good for the general shareholder, no? I mean, there's nobody that goes into a company and tries to convince the board to do something that's bad for shareholder returns. Well, I don't know. We have a bit of skepticism about that. I would say that uh, about half of the attacks are 50% right, a few are 25, 20, 75% right, and some are completely right.